This is what you'll learn how to make today. Brian Sid is a progressive house, deep house, and melodic house and techno artist with a variety in styles, but always hitting top tier quality and maintaining a unique signature sound. A combination of dark forward moving energy mixed with beautiful melodies and deep rhythms, all with a touch of psychedelic and super trippy atmospheres. Before we get started, make sure to hit subscribe so you get more videos like this one. And at if any point you want to download this project file, click in the link in the description below. All right, let's get started. So Brian's low end is usually very powerful, very sub heavy, and then the top end is very wide and a lot of stuff kind of going on in the sides of the image. The track is at 120 BPM. Usually Brian keeps his tracks around 118 to 123. And the key of the track is in G minor and I'm using the harmonic minor scale. So first the kicks, Brian's kicks usually aren't super snappy in the high end. So I have two kicks layered up here. They sound like this. Punchy, sub heavy, but they do have a little bit too much high end. I've put the, the kick in mono here, and then I'm just going to tame the high end with some dampening. Now it retains the punchiness, but it doesn't have so much high end snapping through. And I'm just going to throw a drum bus on there with a really low dry wet because the drum bus is a limiter and it makes it a bit aggressive. So I'm just gonna tone that down a little bit and push my dampening up as well. Maybe not all the way. All right, awesome. We can start working on the bass next. So with the bass, again, very sub heavy, but a lot of Brian Sid's basses have a lot of really dark undertones and grit. I'm going to use a wavetable and I'm going to actually pitch that down pretty low, but not using the synth itself. So, and I'm going to keep that at a sine wave and the MIDI itself is G zero. So it's pretty low. You can take a look at the sub frequency here, we're all the way down to 50 Hertz. If I went to an even lower octave, it would be at 25 and that's basically too low. So I'm going to keep it at the 50 and I'll push the sustain in the amplitude up. So now I just have a basic sine wave, clean sub, and I'm going to group this together by pressing control or command G and I'm going to duplicate this. And so this base is going to have some width as well. So I'm going to change this from the sine wave to the sawtooth wave, which is going to give me a bunch of harmonics. So I'm going to turn my filter to 24, bring the frequency down to about 600. So I just have that warm kind of gritty sound. You can pull this down a little bit as well. And I'm going to add a very small amount of unison and reverb. And before you get all upset with me that we're using reverb and unison on a bass, we're going to remove the sides of the image from the low end. So I want that unison to give a bit of movement, the reverb low cut off and decay time up a little bit. Quality I'm going to push to high and a little bit more reverb. So we don't want stereo image on our base. That's a general big no-no. So we want to make sure that we're putting our EQ in mid side and removing the sides of the image. So I'm going to go here times four and cut anything below like two or 300. So I still have some width up in this high end. This is all wide still, it's still in stereo. But anything below that point, is not going to be in stereo, so it won't generally cause issues. Then I'm going to take my mid and I'm going to cut out those sub frequencies because I already have a sub bass. Okay, so now if I go back, I can see I have sub and some width. Oh, and I got to make sure that my EQ and reverb are in fact on the right channel. So bring those both back into the width. So they're only affecting the width. So I have a nice wide top end and a like powerful clean sub. But what I'm gonna do now is instead of lowering the octave in the synth, which it'll sound gritty, but it won't sound as good. It sounds cool. 
but it sounds better if I do it this way. So I'm going to actually resample. So I'm going to create an audio track, resampling, and I'm going to solo the width of the bass. Maybe put my reverb up a little bit more. So let's hit record. Just going to fix the audio here. And then I'm going to push this volume up because it's pretty quiet. And we can take a listen to that. Okay, so it sounds warm and gritty, but check this out. If I lower the octave of the actual clip, it's going to use an algorithm to change that pitch and it sounds super gritty and warm. Oh yeah. That's dut. So with this new bass, I'm actually going to create a bass line. So creating that really gritty warm bass is vital to this track, getting that really nice deep vibe. So I'm going to actually insert a sampler and use this bass as a sort of instrument. The sampler's here, I can drag and drop that sample into here, turn up the volume, and draw in some MIDI. I'm gonna draw in the MIDI, but I have to remember that the C is actually the middle note now, so if I play the G on here, it's not gonna actually be a G. It's the way that MIDI works, it follows the keyboard, so C is actually where my G note is now. I'm gonna go to almost all the way to the end here and then create another kind of jump here, and I'm just going to duplicate that over a few times and consolidate that. I'm gonna drop it down to the C2, which is the actual note that I have here. Throw an EQ on there. And I'm just gonna turn it up in the EQ a little bit. And take a listen to how this sounds, it's nice and groovy. I can get rid of this channel because I don't need this anymore. And I'm going to group the bases together. Name this bass and add a compressor for some side chain compression. Side chain from the kick. And I can choose now to do either light compression or hard compression. The hard compression is going to give a bit more of a groove and swell to that sound. Or I can do a lighter compression, which will give me more of a traditional side chain, more clean compression. I'm going to do a little bit in between so I get a little bit of that swell. This low end is vital to the Brian Sid style. It's used, he uses stuff like this in a lot of his tracks. So I wanted to make sure that I spent a lot of time on this one. Let's go ahead and work on the drums next. All right, so let's take a look at the drums now. So I have quite a few drums, so spend some time on this for sure. So the, I noticed in a lot of Brian's tracks, he has a lot of percussion and a lot of kind of subtle or quieter hits, ghost hits, things that are just kind of in the background to just some more ear candy, as well as some pretty obvious hooks that are you know meant to be heard more obviously so that they kind of encourage the groove a bit more. So I've incorporated both of those in this track. For this Tom, I made one that just kind of complements the groove. Just kind of adds a little bit of that to the groove. I have a tuner on here to make sure that I am in key with the track. And then I have some EQ just kind of cutting off a little bit of the high end, nothing major. Next, moving on to these toms. These are more of a melodic addition to the loop. Again, just catchy. And I made sure that I put them in the all here. So if you go to receive, you can choose which one of these pads or which one of the MIDI notes on the piano plays that instrument. But if you change that to all, so if you go from whatever it is to all the way to the top and click all notes, it actually works the same way an instrument does by playing different keys, will play different notes of that sound. So again, checking with my tuner, making sure it's in key, you can play different notes here with the toms. And just again, some light EQing to take the top end out, to kind of push it further back in the mix, nothing major. The texture shaker, this one is really cool. So this is a shaker that I'm going to be adding a lot of space and width to, to make it feel like more of a texture, kind of holding everything in the top end together. So this is how it sounds right now. Just 16th notes repeated, that's all it is. But what I'm gonna do is actually add this groove. So I went to the groove pool. I found this one that I liked. Let's hear how it sounds. And then I dragged and dropped that onto the texture shaker here. 
and turn up the random, and then I can hit commit here. And that's gonna change the actual. Maybe that was too much. Let's go back, control Z, and I'll turn the random down and the timing down a little bit. Commit. That's better. So now it's got a little bit of groove to it, a little bit of swing. And I'm going to first throw a compressor on that and create some sidechain compression. This is going to instantly create a groove. So sidechain from the kick. Already sounds good, sounds swingy. And then I'm going to add this has effect so i do this in pretty much every video you have to be careful with has effect because it can cause issues when you down mix to mono but a big wide sound like this it shouldn't matter so 100 dry wet zero feedback change this to one and this to anything over seven milliseconds so now it sounds nice and wide okay sounding good I'm going to add this wooden room reverb preset. It sounds really nice on this. And now you can start to hear that kind of textury washed out sound. And uh, let's do maybe 80 or 90% dry wet on there and then decay time up. Maybe a little bit less high end. And last, I'm going to add an LFO onto the end of that and just give more movement. So uh, map to the dry wet and let's go say 85% to 95%. Just a little bit of movement on that dry wet. Maybe a little bit less and a little bit more. Again, with a lot of these sounds, I want to be making them very organic sounding, very like unique and always kind of moving around, adding movement, adding swing, making it feel like it's not so rigid and, and robotic and pretty much made by a computer, which it is. Okay, let's move on to the next shaker. Again, just 16th notes, just one single shaker. I'm gonna add that swing to it again. I'm gonna copy the side chain from this one. And just some basic EQ to cut out the lows. And that sounds pretty good. The 16th Tom. So in a few of Brian's tracks, I noticed there's like this percussive element that he plays on 16th notes. I couldn't get the exact sound right, but I just want to try this out. I don't know if I'll keep it in the final track, but I just wanted to show you kind of what I did. I just chose this sound and just played it over and over again. And it kind of sounds cool. So EQ. Same side chain as the shakers. And then maybe a tuner to make sure it's in key. There we go, pretty close. Uh, I'll turn that on and off at the end just to show you kind of what it sounds like in the rest of the mix. But it was pretty cool that uh, I wanted to cover it just in case you wanted to add it in your own tracks. Next is the hat. I have three layers. I have a softer hat. Kind of fill up the space a little bit. This open hat to kind of give more tail. And then this really crisp, punchy hat, which sounds a little bit too loud, so I'll turn that down a little bit to help it punch through the mix. I'm going to go into hat three, and I'm going to add wider, which is a free plugin. I suggest you download it. I can put that in the link in the description below. And it's just going to add a bit of width to that sound. Just pushing the sides a little bit more. And then I have my other two hats kind of in the center of the mix. Maybe I pan one a little bit to the left. Maybe I pan a little one to the right. One slightly left, one slightly right, and one wide, which is gonna give us some nice width to this. Last, I'm gonna add a saturator onto that channel just to give it a bit of noise, uh, a bit of kind of grit and power. And this is how it sounds now. Maybe turn it down a few dB to compensate. And that's basically it for the hat. We have very basic MIDI here. I have this tambourine again, 16ths, and I'm just using sidechain compression again. Just very simple. A lot of Brian's tracks has this nice panned hard tambourine. So I pan it to the right, combined with the shakers. 
Maybe we can pan this one a little to the left. And maybe this hat. By panning left and right, we're getting a lot of width and it sounds really nice. Let's listen to what I have so far. Sounding pretty good so far. Let's continue on with the drums. Next, I have this unique perk. So I noticed that in Brian's tracks, he has usually some interesting sounding percussion that gives it some really unique character. With this unique perk, I just found this kind of weird snare thing. But I didn't like that it has the snare at the beginning, so all I did was just cut until I got this sound. And it, just, it sounds like pretty unique. So I just like that. Let's listen with the kick. Maybe move it over a little bit more. So I want it to kind of be in time with the track, but I don't want that snare. And that sounds good. Maybe some EQ on there as well, just to cut out some of that low end. Awesome. Next, I'm going on to the ghost snares. I want to keep some things in the background as well. So not everything needs to be in the front of the mix. This creates a big sense of space and depth. So these ghost snares, just playing like this. It just keeps it groovy and it's it's playing quite often. So it's they're gonna be kind of like a textural percussion in the back. So I'm going to go in, I'm gonna add a velocity tool. The velocity tool adds a bit of randomness. So some of them hit louder, some of them hit quieter. And then I'm going to add reverb, quite a bit of reverb. Keep the high cut on because you want it to feel further back in the mix. And because they're hitting at the same time as the kick, I'm going to actually grab that side chain compressor again and throw that on. I hear that with a kick. And maybe a little bit of delay, very little because I don't want too much to kind of be obvious. And that'll just be like a nice kind of little background ear candy that you don't even really notice is there. Last two are the clap and snare and then these big snares. The clap obviously is hitting on the same notes as a clap usually does. And I have two layers here. So I have a nice crispy top end to get it to kind of punch through the mix. Uh, usually you want a nice clean clap, nothing too snare-y. Um, but then this one, is pretty snary, but it has like a nice pitch to it. So I want to grab that pitch and kind of push it up a little bit so that it feels more tonal. So I'm going to grab an EQ, throw that on, and I want to push up this high area here and try to find the key. Maybe too high, like right here. And cut out some of that low end. It just gives it a bit of like, a, not a melody, but it has pitch and tone and it kind of helps it punch through a little bit. I'm just going to turn that down a few dB. It's actually pretty high. Let me actually push. Oh, and I actually pushed this down seven semitones as well. I forgot to mention. So this one was up here and I push it down a little bit. So it's not so bright and aggressive in the top end. Last, I have these big snares and then we're going to take a listen to the kick, bass and drums all together. So the big snares are like those big white noisy snares that I hear he does in a lot of tracks. Just three snares hitting. But the second and third one have lower velocity so that they're quieter. And then I'm going to add some EQ. I don't want that low end, some delay and a vocoder. And I'll turn those off for now. EQ, I'm just going to cut out the low end. Don't really want that. Boost up the highs a little bit. The, ping, the delay is going to be a ping pong delay and very quiet. Even less feedback. And draw it. Very, very subtle. 10 and 10. 
the vocoder is going to add a bit of, well, not a bit, it's gonna add a lot of grit. And what I'm gonna do is automate the dry wet in during, I guess like this part here, I can automate it um, like this. And the release as well, I'm gonna push up really high. And go back to the dry wet. Don't want that to come back down. I want that to kind of fade out. I'll put those lower here. But the, when I arrange the track, I'll actually put those pretty pretty loud. And then a bit of reverb, of course, to really help those tail ends sound nice. High cut. That sounds pretty good. And let's throw a wider on there as well, just to push up that width. Not that high, because we get phase cancellation. Actually, sounds like we're getting phase cancellation through the whole thing, so I'm just gonna turn that off, actually. Don't really need that anymore. Uh, cool. So now we can listen to all the drums, kick, and bass together before we move on to the synths and wrap up this track. going to EQ out some more of that low end of this shaker here. It's just a little bit too much low end and a bit more high. Awesome. All right, let's move on to the synths. And then I said, sorry, but then you talked over me. I don't know if you're going to say anything. Oh, that's okay. I probably, that was probably one of my old takes. All right, we're going to move into the synths and atmospheres. And this is going to go pretty quick because I used a lot of presets. <laughs> But hey, I don't think using presets is taboo as long as you're not relying solely on them, you're tweaking them, or you're using them in a way that's not just relying on the preset as kind of like a crutch. Some of these sounds are amazing and they fit the style so well that I just had to use them when I was checking out some of the sounds for inspiration. I'm gonna show you each individual sound and then the final project is gonna have the use of these atmospheres in its own way. The first one is called Mouth of the Whale Choir. Yep. It's like this throat singing didgeridoo style sound. It sounds super cool in the tracks. Check this out. Super cool. Uh, so I just literally grabbed that preset, threw it on, and I'm just going to EQ out the low end of that so it doesn't overlap. Really cool sound. Moving on to this next one. I just have a hi-hat that I thought sounded really nice with some... Uh, feedback uh, from a delay. Uh, actually, instead of a delay, I'm gonna grab an echo because that's gonna add even more space with the reverb on it. And then I have this perk train track. And again, just like a big atmosphere. I love doing this in tracks, adding just a huge reverb and delay on sounds and creating these huge kind of soundscapes. Uh, pushing this up to 33% will give it even more of like a kind of off timing feel. I put this back here. Really cool. And you can do this with a lot of different sounds, literally just grab anything. If I just grabbed a random percussion, threw that in with this delay and echo, it sounds, uh, delay and reverb, it sounds really cool. And it adds a bit of mystery and atmosphere to the, the track. So I'll bring this back out here. I'll use that later. Then I have this one called Voice. Uh, this one is same thing, just a low pad on the G. This is just an octave higher, to be honest. Uh, so this one sounds a bit cleaner. Same preset. And I'm gonna use that in the track later on as well to create another atmosphere. So let me just go ahead and throw a delay and a reverb on there. And the delay is going to have a ton of feedback and dry wet is gonna be really high. Decay time is gonna be really high. Low cut and high quality, why not? Yeah, see like, that sounds really nice. Nice big atmosphere that I can put in later in the track. Going on to this next one, this is pigments. So I know, I like I said, I know I usually at least create some of these sounds in the videos, but like Brian is so good at sound design and it would have been 
quite the mission to try and fit all those into a video. So I think it's totally fine if you're using presets in this way. You're creating these atmospheres, these one shots, these hits that are going to add so much depth to the track. There's nothing wrong with that. No problem using presets in this way. Like, listen how cool this sounds. Like, that's so cool. And it fits the vibe so well. So I'll be using that later on the track as well. This one's called Discovery. Then I have this low Atmo and this lead ARP. So I was gonna create this myself because it wouldn't be that hard, but again, this preset sounded like exactly what I wanted to produce. So I just used this pigments preset. These will all be bounced out to audio. So if, if you wanna download the project files and you don't have these synths, you can still use the audio from it. And if you wanna create the sounds yourself or try to create them yourself, I do have another video which creates some sort of sounds like this, which you can click the card in the corner. It will bring you to that video so you can watch that later. So this is called Double Buff and it sounds so awesome. If I open up the MIDI here, I'm using that same scale, the harmonic minor. I'm just playing G, D sharp, D, G, just back and forth. And with this, this preset, it just sounds so good. So much movement. It's basically just using a formant filter and a bandpass. And it's moving back and forth a lot. It's changing, it's following either the LFO or the randoms here. And it's moving around the sound a lot. And it's moving the waveform around, around, around a lot as well, which creates this huge movement in the sound. And it just sounds so good. And lastly, I just duplicated that and pushed it on that low G again. And it sounds super cool too. It's like almost dubstepy, but it sounds like a Brian Sid sound. So I wanted to include that as well. I'm gonna do a quick arrangement of this track and let you hear the final product. Just took all the instruments so far and just brought them over to this minute mark here. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna do a slight build up here. And maybe move the drop over here. <clears throat> we'll see. So I'll just take the kick, EQ out the low end. I'm gonna filter out the drums, I think. I'll just put the EQ on the whole drum bus. So all the drums will fade out into the breakdown. Filter out the low end of the bass. And then when it comes in, I wanna take away all the drums basically. So maybe keep the toms in, maybe the texture shaker, but everything else I think will be gone. So let's cut these and the unique perk can stay, the ghost snares can stay. Basically, I just want it to be like a big kind of open-ended drop that Brian does a lot. Awesome. With the drums as well, I'm going to add some reverb and automate the dry wet of the reverb so that it starts really low and gets high right before the drop. And now for some of those big atmospheres. So I want this perk to hit right at the drop. So it kind of like. Maybe I'll turn off those shakers for now too. Just let the kick kind of breathe. These big snares, I want to automate the vocoder. Dry, wet, and release. The release can go up a little higher. Let's go. So let's go. I'm just going to draw some random higher and lower bits here. Okay, so that's in the drums. I'm gonna put that into the atmospheres area. So it's not getting filtered out. And I'm going to automate the dry wet, uh, sorry, the release as well. So that these ones right here will be much longer. And I'm gonna duplicate that over a few times. And dry wet, continue to go up. 
and get rid of these ones here. And I release time back down. Awesome, almost done here uh, with the atmosphere. So we have this one here. Maybe I'll put that where the breakdown kind of starts. This one down here. I'll put that twice. One over here as well, but I'm gonna automate the low end of that. I hope I'm not going too quick. Uh, but I'm just going to filter out that bottom end just a little bit right away because it's pretty low. Uh, so we're cutting out here, but then also as it's building, it's going to cut out more. And then maybe on the drop, I'll have this really crazy sounding one. Or Nope, that's not the right one, but I will put that before as well. Take the low end and filter that out, especially because it's much lower sound. There's one more sound I want to grab, this one right here. And throw an EQ on there because it also has a lot of low end. Maybe I'll move these over a little bit to let the kick breathe again. Nice, that's sounding good. So let me just bring these over as well. Some more Atmos every once in a while. Cool. And last thing, I'll take out the kick a little bit. I have the lead still, so let me see if I can plop that in there somewhere. Maybe during the, the, the build up here, I can automate that in with some cutoff automation configure, some cutoff. And bring this down. And then I want to filter that out in the breakdown. I'll have to use an actual auto filter or an EQ. And I'm going to cut that out as well. So a lot of Brian breakdowns and buildups, they kind of just like fade out into some weird background noise and a lot of atmospheres and such. So I'm kind of replicate that here by kind of letting the track breathe a little bit. And then just giving this like airy, spacey breakdown, and then into nothing, a break, uh, a drop that is much more open ended. If you haven't subscribed already, now is the perfect time to do so and give the video a like if you enjoy what you hear. Maybe open this up a little bit more, a little earlier and open this up a little bit earlier. And then I'm just going to repeat this little area right here, kind of like a, a small mix out as that kind of fades out. Take those hats out as well and just leave.
If you want to learn how to make music like other artists, check out one of these two videos right here.